if you're a glass half full kind of guy or gal, you might envision a future of wondrous technological advancements, exciting scientific discoveries and intergalactic exploration. If you're more cynical about these things though, you're probably already stockpiling tins of beans and reading up on guerrilla warfare tactics for when we have to overthrow an authoritarian government. Don't worry, I'm sure it won't come to that. Everything is fine. If you do happen to fall into camp everything that's going to plops, then you'll be pleased to know that you're not alone, as a number of video game developers also have a less than optimistic view of what the future holds. For this list, we're looking at video games that make the future look bleak. We'll be focusing on titles that predict 1984-style dystopias with oppressive totalitarian leadership, rather than post-apocalyptic hellscapes, as we've already covered those on another list. Burn your books, mind your curfew, and don't forget to pledge your allegiance to Billy Ray Walrus, because I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 dystopian video games that paint a horrifying picture of the future. Number 10, Remember Me. Now, call me old fashioned or whatever, but I can't help but feel like technology that allows people to upload their memories to a cloud network could be anything but bad news. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for advancement, but something like that just feels like one step too far. If the 2013 Capcom title Remember Me is anything to go by though, this is exactly the sort of future we can all look forward to. You know, assuming we make it to the year 2084. Remember Me is set in the city of Neo Paris, where residents can have special chips created by mega corporation Memorize implanted into their brains, which allow them to upload and share their memories with other people, and even remove any unhappy memories should they wish. Naturally, this effectively makes memorized mind readers and means that they can watch any users of the chip whenever they want. The game follows protagonist Nilin, whose memories have been wiped by Memorize, as she embarks on a quest to bring down the evil corporation and restore the memories that have been taken from her. The idea of a company knowing your every thought is frankly terrifying, and it makes us incredibly grateful that Alexa can't read our minds. She, she can't read our minds, right? Number 9, Observer. If you've ever been unlucky enough to have your computer infected with a virus, you'll know that it's the absolute pits. At best, you'll be left with a hefty bill for an IT technician, or if it's really bad, you might lose all of your files or even end up with a bricked machine. Fortunately, humans can't catch computer viruses, or at least we can't catch them yet. If Observer is to be believed though, then such a thing is just a few short decades from causing humanity a whole bunch of problems. The game takes place in the year 2084 in Krakow, where a digital plague known as the Nanofag has cost the lives of thousands, resulting in war and widespread drug use. Players take on the role of Daniel Lazarski, an Observer detective with the license to hack the minds of others for information. After receiving a call from his estranged son and tracing it to the slums, Daniel finds his investigation skills put to the test by a seemingly the endless body count. The concept of a digital plague makes Observer scary enough, but throw in a totalitarian regime and law enforcement that can hack people's minds at will, and you've got an utterly horrifying snapshot of what the future might look like. Number 8, Mirror's Edge. If you are offered an opportunity to live in a society where people live comfortably and crime is basically non-existent, you'd probably jump at the chance. Such is life for the characters in Mirror's Edge, however, they'd be the first to tell you that things are not always as they seem. Although the city depicted in Mirror's Edge may seem like a utopia, it is actually far from it, and the citizens are kept in line by an oppressive regime that controls both them and the media. Mirror's Edge tells a story of Faith Connors, a runner who delivers goods and sensitive information across Across the city. A new mayoral candidate has stepped forward, looking to deregulate the city and bring a degree of free will back to its people. But before he can be elected, he is murdered, and Faith's sister becomes a prime suspect. Beyond the veneer of order, the city is riddled with corruption. Faith must do everything in her power to not only prove her sister's innocence against all odds, but also to evade the forces that are doing everything they can to eliminate runners like her. Though a future free of crime would be ideal for most, Mirror's Edge paints a disturbing picture of peace, of at a shockingly high cost. After all, what's the point of peace if you're not free to enjoy it? Number 7 Beyond Good and Evil If you ever take a look at the news and think, I don't want to live on this planet anymore, then we know exactly how you feel. If 2003's Beyond Good and Evil was anything to go by though, leaving Earth may not be the solution to our problems we were looking for. The year is 2435 and humanity has made its way across the galaxy to the planet of Hillis. Though global warming is a thing of the past, humanity has a new threat to their existence in the form of alien race, the Dom-Z, who are holding the planet under siege and abducting its inhabitants to either drain their life force or turn them into slaves. Don't blame me. I voted for Dom Y. As though that isn't bad enough, 
There are some, including underground resistance group the Iris Network, who believe that the military dictatorship in charge of Hillis is actually in league with the aliens. After her lighthouse orphanage is attacked and several of the children taken by Domsey, it's up to protagonist Jade to save the kids and uncover the conspiracy that threatens the entire planet. Trust a human government to save their own bacon, eh? At least we know it wouldn't really happen. Number 6. Detroit Become Human on paper, a society where most of the work is done by artificially intelligent androids sounds ideal. No more getting up early to go into the office, no more rush hour traffic, and absolutely no more disgusting smelling offices because someone decided to bring in fish for lunch. As Detroit Become Human demonstrates though, there's always a risk that AI can develop sentience and before you know it, you've got a robot resistance on your hands. The game is set in the year 2036, by which point humanity has been able to create androids which perform a variety of jobs from housekeeping to construction. Naturally, those who are out of work because of the androids are pretty mad about it, and many of the androids have begun to override their own programming and gain sentience, sick of being slaves to humanity. Although much of Detroit Become Human setting looks incredibly futuristic, it's merely a facade, hiding the many problems that both the people and androids of the city face. The people who have lost their jobs have fallen into poverty, whereas the androids are forced to fight against oppressive laws that prevent them from exercising free will. The whole situation is incredibly messy, and it might make players think twice before purchasing a Roomba. Number 5. Cyberpunk 2077 Despite the bright lights and unimaginably advanced technology, it's fair to say that Night City, the setting of Cyberpunk 2077, is an absolute hellhole. Sure, you can pick up some sweet cybernetic enhancements, and pretty much everything from transportation to maintenance is run by robots, but none of that matters when you're forced to take your life in your hands every time you step out of your front door. Night City, home to millions of people, is controlled by corporations who don't care one dot about its inhabitants, unless they're loaded, of course. These corporations, naturally, are not content to share power, and so the city is in a constant state of flux as the ruling entities contend for dominance. Things aren't much better at street level either, as homelessness is endemic and vicious gangs constantly fight each other for territory. The the threat of violence is so prevalent, in fact, that citizens are permitted to openly carry firearms at all times. To the untrained eye, Night City may well look like a bright and colourful futuristic town, but scratch just a little underneath the surface and you'll find a nightmarish landscape filled with crime and corruption. Perhaps not a place to plan one's retirement, eh? Number 4. Killzone Shadow Fall I probably don't need to tell you that war is hell, but for those of you who are stuck in the midst of it, the aftermath can be just as bad as the conflict itself. Set in 2370, Killzone Shadow Fall follows on from the events of Killzone 3. After their home planet is destroyed, the Helgen people are forced to relocate to the planet Vector, which also happens to be home to those with whom the Helgens were at war with. As one might expect, tensions between the people of Vector and the refugees within the walls of New Helgen are close to boiling point, with each side blaming the other for the war that cost so many lives. The game's protagonist is Lucas Kellen, a shadow marshal in the employ of the Vecton Security Agency. Under the guidance of Thomas Sinclair, he conducts covert operations in Helgen territory, though it soon transpires, unsurprisingly, that there is evil on both sides. Killzone Shadowfall paints an utterly damning picture of the future. Sure, it would be great if humanity advances far enough to settle on other planets, but it is isn't going to mean an awful lot if we can't stop fighting amongst ourselves. Number 3. Deus Ex You know, despite how bad things look in the cyberpunk universe, I still have high hopes for a peaceful future where cybernetic enhancements are possible. Admittedly, Deus Ex does not predict that kind of future either, but I'm not about to let that squash my dreams of having bionic arms. Deus Ex is set in 2052, by which time the divide between rich and poor has intensified, with some cities going as far as to physically segregate the common folk from the wealthy. As though that weren't bad enough, a dead plague ravages the world, and though a vaccine is available, it's in short supply, and you get no prizes for guessing that the rich and powerful are first in line to receive it. Naturally, most people aren't too happy about all of this, and a number of terrorist organisations form with the intent to take down the man. When we first meet augmented protagonist JC Denton, he's working with anti-terrorist group UNATCO, though it isn't long before his loyalties are put to the test. Yes, a plague-infested world run by the wealthy does sound like a nightmare, 
and somewhat familiar, but the main thing I'm taking away from all of this is that I'm a mere three decades away from limbs with whisk attachments. Number two, Watchdogs Legion. According to multiple conspiracy theorists, the government is doing everything it can to track us at all times. If this is really the case, then someone down at MI5 is probably having an incredibly boring time watching me sitting on my sofa playing video games all day, only stopping to go to work or the fridge. If Watchdog's Legion is to be believed, then the surveillance state is right around the corner. At least for the residents of London, artificial intelligence has displaced many human workers, the beloved pound has been replaced by cryptocurrency, and the 6G mobile network has been fully established, presumably to the chagrin of at least a dozen citizens. As though faster mobile connectivity wasn't bad enough, the city is also played by multiple different factions who are each using the centralised operating system for their own ends, most of which are pretty nefarious. Players take on the role of several different characters, each of whom is working with the hacker group DeadSec. The group has been framed for a series of terrorist bombings and is working to clear their names, all while seeking to overthrow the entities that are oppressing the population. It's a frightening view of the future and a reminder that if Big Brother doesn't end up watching us, He's likely not going to be alone. Alexa, how do I make a tin foil hat? And number one, Half-Life 2. Here's a question for you. What's worse than being forced to live in a totalitarian dystopia with little to no freedom? That's right, living in a totalitarian dystopia with little to no freedom and head crabs. Total nightmare, would not recommend. Half-Life 2 is set roughly 20 years after the events of Half-Life, during which the Black Mesa research facility accidentally opened a portal to the hostile alien dimension, Zen. Such a maneuver attracted the attention of the Combine, who proceeded to invade and conquer Earth in a matter of just hours. Bespectacled hunk Gordon Freeman learns of this after awakening from stasis, and finds that not only have the Combine taken over the entire planet, but they're maintaining order by biologically assimilating as much of the population as they can. Not one to take such news lying down, Gordon joins a resistance movement led by Dr. Eli Vance and prepares to kick some serious alien ass. Is the dystopian future depicted in Half-Life 2 the worst version of the future ever depicted in a video game? In our opinion, yes. But would we take it over the constant threat of nuclear war and global warming? No. Are you kidding? Give me melting ice caps over turning into a headcrab zombie any day of the week.